So the story was The Darning Needle, The Darning Needle, um, by Hans Christian Andersen, and it was taken from 37 Utterly Silly Stories. And the reason why, if you don't know that sometimes I read stories, and I, I'm trying my best to be consistent, but life happens. Um, I read stories with the intention or with the hope that it will inspire you to read stories to your children. It's bedtime stories at night, um, 7.30 on a weeknight, like Monday to Thursday, as much as I can. Yeah, I love Hans Christian Andersen too. But um, I read these stories with the hope that it becomes commonplace or um, it becomes more more uh, normal, for want of a better word. Um, and maybe it will inspire some of you to read stories to your kids. And I was inspired to do this by a friend of mine who was having trouble bonding with his daughter. Um, she went through some changes and she started to react to them by acting out. And he asked for advice. He, did, he wanted to figure out how he could connect with her. And I, among the things I suggested, I said, um, read stories to her at night. And he said, that's something that white people do on TV. Um, and I was like, no, people do that. The parents do that. Um, so that is why I decided to start reading it. Now, for last week, I did not read at all because I was kind of bedridden and recovering from the flu. Um, I apologize for that because I can't come and cuss you and say, read to your kids, read to your kids, and let me start. Let me, let, let me start the reading and then disappear. So I apologize for that because we need to be more consistent if me ever ask you to be consistent, right? May I try to lead by example. I'm also still inviting you guys to come and read stories too. Still inviting you guys to come and read stories too. Um, somebody was saying something about video going viral. Um, big up everybody who said big up. Um, I don't know what video you're talking about going viral. My daughter won't sleep if I don't read to her something I've been doing since she was in my tummy. Lovely, I love that. I do that read since in tummy too. I'm a plan for put some two fellas in my tummy. I'm a plan for read to them too. And I've already started reading to them now before I even got here. But reading to your, your children is more than just killing time. It's it's developing their vocabulary, it's developing their confidence, it's developing the bond between you and them. It's it's developing you as well. It's giving give, giving them a solid foundation. Um, all right, Shanika, just, it is so many things. Hey, Tada, big up. You like this story tonight? It was short and funny. <laughs> but yeah, how much time you meet that, that darning needle? Is a darning needle. Who kept thinking she was something way finer than a darn, darning needle. And the truth is a darning needle is quite noble. It has a very good purpose. But it wasn't good enough for her. She thought she should be an um, embroidery needle. And then she felt better as a brooch in everything except darning needle. And some of us are like that. We want to be everything except ourselves. So if we hang around um, some people who are participating in an activity we start doing too, even though it's uncomfortable for we, we still do it just for just for fit. Um, we want to be something that we attach more importance to than the thing that we actually are, which is sad because every single one of us is special and unique. Every single one of us has strengths um, that we are particularly customized for. Um, when we follow a passion, we really, really excel, we shine, we glow. And some of us live and die at a ripe old age and never discover that. And that is sad. To me, that is the saddest thing. To, to live and die and never, ever meet yourself. Because you're so amazing. Every single one of you.
I am amazing and I'm happy I met me. Um, I can't think of anybody on earth I would rather be than me. I love me. Um, because, of course, me are the most amazing thing ever touched this planet. And, I mean, it's never, ever going to get any better than this. <laughs> but you are the best you. You are the best thing you can possibly be. And, and Dr. Seuss said it better than me. Dr. Seuss got it right, right? Um, this is true. You are, there's no one around who is you than you. Yeah. yeah. Of course, me think me amazing, Tada. Me, me know me amazing. Um, every single one of us. But sometimes we get so caught up in trying to be the amazing thing that somebody else is. Yeah? Right, Brit? I, do, I, I had a fortune of meeting me. God, what a girl good. And when we say when girl good, girl good, you know. Oh, Jesus, Miss Titwell, don't, don't even make me get started upon me. Because meta shit. I love to refer to myself as an unprecedented miracle. The words of James Baldwin. Look, look at that. I think I shall refer to myself thusly also. Unprecedented miracle. Yeah, man, we're good. Sometimes we forget, but it's easy to forget because we have so many negative words thrown at us on a daily basis. Let me tell you one lesson when we get the other day. On Saturday, do <laughs> you feel like in a church? Saturday, I had uh, an appearance in Amo Bay. So I left out and I drove alone because there's nobody to drive with me from home. I met Sharon them at the to at the end of the toll. And Sharon drove with me and that DJ that come and and um Slaughter, uh wave name Alton Slaughter drove by themselves. On my way to meet with them, when I got to White River. My light was green and I was driving straight. I was doing everything the way I was supposed to. But a taxi driver was coming from Ochi and me, wanting to make the right um, to go up to exchange. And my light was green and we were in a line of traffic just moving steadily, slowly. And the taxi driver was actually blinking and honking me to stop to let him by. Now listen to me. I could have just gone about my business and ignored him because really him there over there so him not. Me not for people no mind. I proceeded to put my hand out the window and fan him off like, hey boy, move on away. You know what I did? My bracelet fly. <laughs> and if the universe is as much of a comedian as I think it is, it probably landed in his car. So to his girlfriend, that's a really nice bracelet. Take care of it. <laughs> Love it the way I did. <laughs> No name in the streets. It's from his book. Okay, cool. Listen to me. Instant fucking karma. I laugh. I have to laugh because I'm like, I love that bracelet so much. Um, I had on three and then, I, then when, I, when I put my hand back on the steering, there was only two. <laughs> it's a very nice bracelet. I can't remember. I think I bought it in, in Antigua. It's antique silver and it has a, a semi-precious stone on both ends of it. It looks purple. Lady, if you got that bracelet, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, you deserve it. And I got a really good lesson. Um, I saw it. It couldn't be nothing but a lesson. That was an instant. Like, like listen, man. Me and the universe just there. So I play with each other. And um. I did it again today and I instantly remember that I'm like, Jesus Christ, what a girl done. She not learn one Ross. Because when they do that, I'm like, boy, move. But it is not my job to teach him to drive. It is not my job to teach him to be a decent human. It's not my job to teach him anything. It's my job to learn how to be me. And here I am out here, fun enough people. Tell us we have control of how we react. Yeah, we do. And I know this. So, I got my lesson. My bracelet is gone. <laughs> By the time I notice it's gone, I couldn't even turn back and go look for it. There's traffic. I would have to stop traffic like a police officer for go look for the ground to see if it did it. When, most likely it flew into the car. But I pass back and look. Um, later, just the same. When I was coming back by myself. I stopped out there 
the place was empty and I searched no bracelet and I'm like yes universe you have my full attention I am listening and I shall learn if it kills me <laughs> but that was really funny and me share it because me think maybe it can help you know, for remember to say we there for learn um patience humility I mean you don't have to do exactly what I do and you don't have to learn my lesson that was my lesson um but if it can be of any use to you then I share it it was very funny <laughs> instantly oh god and I went on to have a good night after having a good laugh um hopefully when I get back to Antigua Another time I can find back a bracelet like that. I remember where the store is nearby. The the tourist shops. It's one of the tourist shops. Somewhere nearby the pier, the dock or something. So, Antigua. Lady in the store in Antigua, my friend, who would chat so much. Look out for me and put up my bracelet for me so we can come back home here one more. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But that was my lesson from Saturday night. And me also uh, take my time and chill. I turned off my SIM. Lock off my SIM. Because Morella is saying eh, access accessibility kind of warp people. <clears throat> accessibility warps people's understanding of entitlement to your time and listen me love me love my friend them very much but me, me just as start to realize how stressful it'll be somehow no. love it, you know? don't get me wrong no less love no less love but me lock off my sim and me start ignore my whatsapp a man it a dawn for me now and now me feel May I feel relaxed, you know. But may I realize that the phone yeah, is really, really stressful. Like, everybody wants to talk for five minutes. But it's a, if it's a hundred people, that's five hundred minutes. And everybody thinks he or she is the only one deserving of some time. When really and truly, I am the only one deserving of my time. And when I say, I am, if I say I'm under the weather, I don't want to keep saying that all day to a million people. Because that is me, that is me cementing that into reality. Saying, I'm under the weather. I'm under, I don't want to say that. Right? I, so it's best to not have to speak to you at all. If I say I'm not available, just accept that now. Why am I have to tell you my personal private business? For you for just accept say me not available me not have to be available all the time cut me slack this is not a request you could feel my energy withdraw you my energy withdrew because i had to you see me even miss out on a couple of days of my affirmation because I, I my body and my mind was screaming chill just chill and me do that and you know all right, may I got you one little phase No, May I always got you one little phase. Right now, may I got you one little phase where I really re-evaluate a lot of my friendships. May I re-evaluate a lot of my friendships and I feel like I'm going to come out of this with a lot less friends. Because if I have to tell you 10 times, so I don't feel well. I feel like I don't feel bad talk to you again. I'm not supposed to have to tell you 10 times so I don't feel well. If I don't feel well, I don't feel well. It don't take it personal. Don't center yourself in my health. I don't feel well. Allow me to get better properly. Allow me to forget. And, and not feeling well is normal. I don't have a lot of friends to begin with. <laughs> Jamar, I barely have no friends. I have very few friends. I do very... I have a very few friends. But even some would rather not have any friends at all than for have friends who may have to consistently beg a space from. I shouldn't have to. I'm not supposed to have to do that. 
me not supposed to have to say, me not feel good. And then when I say me not feel good, me not supposed. And it's not that somebody is trying to take me chicken soup. Not that I want chicken soup. But for the most part, for the things I'm wearing, I'm supposed to do with my friends. And I can't do it because I'm not able right now. It may feel pressured. I feel like one sense of urgency I put down in my lap. And don't and no, get me wrong, you know, my friends on right now, you know, and I mean, I want to know my friend and feel like this is a this is an attack on any individual. It's not because believe me, if I show you my phone right now, you will see, say, I not exaggerate. It's a lot. It's a lot. And oh goodness, man, I don't provide no kind of essential service. I don't. Entertainment, do. If I'm not available, move on to the next entertainer. I wait until I come up back. That is it. I mean, it's not, I don't do any, anything urgent. If you have an emergency, you can't call me because me have no use to you in an emergency. I really don't have a use to you. So, when I lie down in my bed, I start to feel guilty because I can think of 15, 20 things where people are waiting for me to do. That is wrong. If me feel ill and lie down in my bed, I shouldn't feel guilty about nothing at all. Me should I only feel guilty if me get up and try for work when me not feel good. If me feel guilty, it means that somebody has extra guilt from me. I mean, allow them to do it, of course, and my choice. But nobody should be doing that. If you have a friend and you love me and you check for me, make me get better now. Just make me get better. I mean, if me can over dead now, all you got to do is just drink liquor and call up my name and you probably spill some for me on the ground. And that's it, and life will continue without me. So that means I can't go on without me for a week. Do let me get better. I want that. I want that for we. I want that for we say me get healthy. Come. So me can get healthy and recuperate. Way up to now. What time you have left? What, what time you have left for the morning? Okay. All right. Cool. Love you, man. Love you, my nigga. Hey! You, you see you? A good lucky thing me the pan live. see me that country. I call me up, you know. What a frigga love hug. <laughs> so, some time ago, I did that gig when I was finished. I had a napkin in my hand and I got paid in a little brown envelope. I left and head home. And driving home, I threw the napkin through the window. Jesus Christ. You threw the napkin? Oh, so the napkin you threw through the window. Oh, first of all, I don't care where you go with this. Why the fuck you throw the napkin through the window? You know how oh, me, I cuss you every day upon the road. You garbage fist here in your car till you reach your yard. You go in a garbage. Do not throw nothing through the window. And you said this for the life. Make people see. Clean. If I want to fight you. I got home and couldn't find the money. So you throw it away. You think you throw it away? No, you think you throw it away? Jamar said boils on to perspective, but then again, people tend to promote the very flawed idea that constantly helping upon people is the ultimate demonstration of showing love and care. Love and care for me if you look after myself and be good. Oh, you think say when I'm a check up on me, it shows that they love and care? No, but sometimes it check up on. Oh, about two months later, I found it in the bottom of the bag. So I did I I something there. The moral of caring stories probably say my bracelet in my car. But the what is story when me get it, say you dash your tissue out the door. You dash your tissue out the door. You're lucky see you find back your money because nature should have did extract payment for you for the blasted garbage you dash out the door. <laughs> hey, tattoo therapy. I love you and your vibes too. So you throw your garbage through the window. Listen, you know one of the most painful things to me for I drive behind somebody and them just throw the garbage through the window, them throw a plastic buckle, food box. Litter, garbage, throw it through the window of the car. And me always a hunk them like, yeah, yeah. I don't know when I'm going to get stroke already, you because know, me, me tell you, so when I lift up the world and put it on my head, call me Atlas. Call me Atlas, because God, me can't put the world on my head. But me just really detest, like, why we do it? And then people come in on my car and look for me like me nasty, because me have my garbage. I in my car garbage for day. 
until I get to somewhere suitable for discard it in a one in a the proper hygienic way. You can't dash your garbage through the window. And then you go to other country and say, oh my God, over here so clean. Me used to hear when me and Jamaicans come home and say, Bermuda is so clean. You can't eat off a grung. I'm like, so dirty bitch, chop, chop, dash for your grung so, so we can start eating off a Jamaica street, you know? Why you not stop dash your garbage a grung so we can eat since you want them off a grung? Make we them off a Jamaica grung to know make we can, you know, we can be as clean as them if we talk, dash garbage a grung. Garbage not true itself. Garbage not true itself. Like there are things where government fault and there are things where we are do. Yes, a government job for, for, for make sure we have proper waste disposal. Right? Solid waste disposal a government uh, responsibility. But a full job for not be nasty. Littering is crazy. It was at a church function other day and saw fellow Christians littering and judge them for a nanosecond before checking myself to say, dang, they're just people. You bring your garbage go your yard. Yes, so that you feel the carrying. Bring your blasted garbage boy your throw napkin to win. I say, if I did ever catch you, worse me know you. If me did ever catch you. I say, one time I drive with the picnic them and they clean on the, the picnic them, by the way, are now all adults. I drive with them, pick them up from school when they did their quest and we live up where they saw Cooper's Hill. At the foot of Red Hills, some police stand up out there, you know. Then you start back in at them time and you start with a police presence out there. So. And I drive, I never. That shit into the window. Me pull over. Me making go pick you up and I conk him. Like you, you now nah, come around and shame, shame me. This ano all uno raise. We go keep one little plastic bag in our car. Or me drop it garbage right on my foot. Me drop it on my foot. Right, and then when me reach home every evening when me reach home, me have a piece part load of garbage to take up from brother over my side or over my passenger side. But me rather inside I care stay dirty until me get a chance to clean it and dispose of the things properly. You can't dash out on the road. Like, listen, me go complain about everything around with Jamaica. And nobody can talk my friend of that. Me go complain and me go criticize, me go critique the government performance. And nobody can talk my friend of that. I'm a job. May I go find a fault with everything we're faulty, which is public business. Me not really business with no personal business. You can do it who you want, figure who you want, live who you want, as long as you don't encroach upon nobody else. Me not care. But things we have to do with the collective, things we affect all of we, things we have to do with business, me care very much. Me care very much. I mean, now got up course. It's not even about the same. It's the principle. I would never date a young girl who I see litter in the street. First of all, if me see one man that shit out a road drink your glass in can't chat to me, I don't even want to say hi. Because me want clutter bug. First of all, me want a hoarder. I'm a clutter. But me can't tell you something though. Me don't like nasty people. Me don't. If you take a garbage, my garbage belong to me. Me don't like nobody else clean up after me. Me want to clean up after myself. Me may take longer, but me want me like to clean up after my personal self. Me like to keep my garbage to myself and discard it properly. Me no feel like say for me. It made a rather my yard dirty than me dirty the road. Cause me can clean my yard at my own discretion. But me no I put nothing out of road. When me no see garbage pan me bex, cause you know for give me some of show me garbage. Garbage truck barely come which part me live hard and you know and you can't plan off it. So me no bother sit down and wait again cause you see people put out them garbage at them gate, dog tear it up and then no carry just sit down there like this is disgusting, it's filthy. And you can't come out the road all dressed and clean and have on the latest styles and act like you something special when you're so nasty. More than that, you know, like how me look. You know, I feel like my wig. You know, I feel like my clothes. You know, I feel like nothing about me. But me can tell you this. You know, I walk by my garbage out the road. That. Me think me care about aesthetics where it counts because these are not just aesthetics. This come with hygiene. This come with taking care of all of our health. Together. Right? When no found it did that cost me and say me forgot on my yard. When you need that dash garbage a road and make it easier for catch whatever I'm afraid of. Me did actually keep for me garbage where it's supposed to be. And me uh -huh, I did wash my dirty hand before I start telling no one that wash and no no nasty set of fuck. No. Right? It's nearly as though people would dump their shit on the street if they had it's not nearly, they do dump their shit on the street. Hey, sometimes when you 
when I pass, I call in the bush. When I drive towards Gale Way, we used to drive through Prospect and drive the way to go Gale. And when you see somebody car them, when you see somebody high end vehicles will pull up beside the gully and throw out oodles of garbage out of them vehicles down in the gully. And you look for them like. And when me cause when me say bumble clot, them people look down for me like something wrong with me now. But I'd rather say a million bumble clot than throw one empty box on the roadside. Because the bumble clot now pollute the place. Your garbage does. Your garbage does. Anyways. What up to literal body waste? Well, if you if if you're up on the road and diarrhea catch you, where well, you gonna crap in your pants? You have to go blow up and shoot a bush. I mean, you're gonna have to. And you pray for rain so it wash it away. That different. And that natural, for the most part, that natural. Right? But your 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 garbage as in the box of KFC and the and, and the Burger King box and the Popeye's box, the fast food box, the fast food waste, and the biggest amount of garbage you know have out on the road. I don't know what is wrong with you. Know. You name the sitting and then you see the bag with the full of garbage. You know, this you know, fucking filthy. Just throw it through the window like that. You, you, I, it land. You, you, me all the drive back of people in a one clean place. Margaret, me soon come to Ireland, man. Clean, clean place, you know. You can look and see, say, the neighbor there, them people take pride in them place. It the, it, the roadside well manicured. Right along the main road. is country. It's not a upscale neighborhood, but you can see them people are here. And it's clean. And, and you see one vehicle pass in front of you and you see a whole bag of garbage. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. How, how do you fix your hand to do that? How, how do you do that? How? Like, no, literally, seriously, how? Me drive two miles, go find one dumpster for throw my garbage, you know? Come in, at some point, the garbage truck will come and empty the dumpster. And when you come and the dumpster full, you know, put your things in the Because you know that just roll gone right to half out the door. But how you fix your hand to pick up one bag of garbage and throw it to your carrier? You know, without even miss a beat, then I slow down, and just, just seal it. I know one special sort. I know one really special sort. And then you have a cost government over that. Listen, cost government over the fact that they are a, 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 a charge a gear little man a ticket for carrying in saw go work. Cost government for that. Because they not ticket nobody for carry laptop and briefcase. Mm hmm But Karen, you know, most you better learn. I already speak to see your chair, make sure that you know, you know, that not even one bubble gum enough in that shut the door. Put that in our wrap in our piece of bub a bubble gum wrapper. Keep that. When you don't chew it and it chews out, put it back in there, stick in a car door. And when you reach home, take out all of that garbage there. Um, I may save my fruit parts them too because I have to use the banana a skin out uh, of uh, that is fertilizer for some things. The other skin them are fertilizer. I make it the seed them because I try plant them and I want to see if they make and get them to grow. Like me not understand. You just see them well fruit skins and stuff like that. If if it is not a well manicured street side, if it is just bush, then that not bad. Because that is fer that actually good. That a fertilizer. Seeds likewise. As long as I want space where so I can accommodate tree it's not a bad thing for chew to an apple seed because we eat apple and later on your grand pitney and my grand pitney may be eating apples from that tree. So none of them they may talk. Your fast food bags and your drink buckle and all these, them drop all glass buckle and wrong, you know. You want to come and show them so when they circle back at them see them and drive over that and the bus the entire. Like some of we, we we're crazy. But anyway, my little place out there on time ago so. <laughs> Hey boy, go it! <laughs> I'm fling out my bracelet. That was good, little. Because it's a little with a lesson. I'm a hope that somebody find it and cherish it the way me to cherish it and love my bracelet. And you can't tell, say, but I'm done. I know my favorite bracelet, but I like it. Me is not a jewelry person either, so I don't like me to cry over it. But I find it hilarious, see. Let's go, so boom. <laughs> 
And the bracelet just be like, oh, so you want to wave? You want you want to wave to people? All right, I'm just going to teach you a lesson. All right. Me did do fire crystal. I'm not familiar with you. Um, Bulby soups, long time in the drink, so may I soup. May I come at all? Wednesday. Let me see if I can manage to get some of your soup. My next children's book, Litter with a Lesson. <laughs> Thou shalt not litter. Why why come on, man? Then couldn't be practical like that. Since as people want smart if you tell them that, well then again, thou shalt not kill, never work out. Cause God will not murder him. Thou shalt not steal, never work out either. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Pig steal tomorrow. I oh, wonder if we can make Kelly come buy some and put it in the freezer. Till me reach and at your point. Cause me never can I want time I get your pig steal no about me. One no more time. No. So you go. Well, it's been a pleasure. I feel a lot better today. Good evening, England. I am not Carrie Bradshaw. Why you say you're not Carrie Bradshaw? You, there are so many people you are not. You're only one person. That means uh, you are not 7 point odd billion other people. So we call Carrie Bradshaw your pick. And Panta Pase, Carrie Bradshaw, the new series. Oh my God. Me never used to watch Sex and the City. Like occasionally when Kelly I watch it and I feel like I sit down with her I'll probably watch an episode or so. But I'm actually watching and just like that. Me, and me discovered because Kelly says she hears it no good. You think me give your mind to you? No, sir. How oh, you catch it on the phone? My real name is Ginny. Oh, like Ginny and what the other show name? Me what? Me spend too much time in my bed, don't. But when me now work, I then I'm better me watch shows so Ginny and Georgia. That's a show, right? That that oh god, that was so good. I find myself one whole little girl. I just want to put her across my lap and hear one good beating. Ginny and Georgia, yeah. That was a that's a nice show. I like that. I sit down and wait out for more from Ozark. I can't stand some more from Ginny and Georgia. Me definitely I watch and just like that. You know what me and Kelly I watch been a watch it together. And me feel like me go just go ahead and continue watching without her because with little time or we have spent together done and gone. Nothing wrong with that. Rest and chilling is underrated. We, in next season now what carrying carrying you done watch out the whole uh, and just like that already. Me say listen, I am not Carrie Bradshaw. Me want beat Ginny so bad. Me I say, how oh, dare you feel up on the woman pick me and want beat her? I just want hold that little girl and hold by her shoulder and shake some sense in her. But that means it's a damn good show. If the show actually make me get into it so much that I want to affect a character that me know say well written, it pluck my heartstring, it tap into me emotions and get me to have an, a, a, a response. Then me know say one good show, and so be like her, be like um, and just like that, because it's so human. Oh yeah, me see you in Canada, see you in Canada shortly, but it's so human. Um, I think some of the fans were expecting these women to be, to be, eternally young, and like maybe them are you know humans it's really scary, because people. People will say, yes, I want to see to carry in Ginny and Georgia the next season. People will, will say, oh, look at that woman, there. she had too much to her face. She's so plastic. She do too much. But these women have decided not to do anything and age, not, well, for the most part, naturally. I'm not sure if any of them did any work, but they seem to be aging naturally from where I stand. And the amount of criticism what them I get. For example, when my girl named her play Carrie Bradshaw, at one point, I see her feed up on the internet I tell people, say, I don't know what I can do about how I look. It's called aging. What am I supposed to do? Like, what the fuck? You, you're saying that you're criticizing this woman, this, this woman's look because she look old. She's old. She old. So, so women have been given this, this, um, unrealistic position to sit in like, all right, if me, I haven't done anything to my face. I'm 50. I haven't done anything to my face. If I feel like I wanted to do something to my face, I wouldn't ask anybody's permission. I just do it. I don't give a fuck. If you want to do something to your face, it's your face. You can go up Sarah Jessica Parker. I love her because 
she's decided to just be not normal, natural. And, and then people are cursing her out and saying she looks old. Like, she's aging. That's what happens. Your age and gravity takes its toll on every part of we. We get laugh lines. I think when I look on my face, I see my laugh line. It, it, it actually makes me feel good. Because I have nothing to laugh about. You know how much people don't laugh? That they have nothing to laugh about. I don't have frown lines. I have laugh lines. It, I think that's nice to age with. Um, and when we look at the way how I see people attack her, it, it, it really hurt. Like, me, I get one lump in my throat because, because me older too. And I understand how people box you. Granted, me full of suck your mothers, you know. Me full of suck yourself, me full of suck. Because me not really have a patience or tolerance for people who invasive and encroaching like that. Like, I am the age that I am. I know exactly what age I am. I know. I don't think it's anybody else's business. If I feel like I want to say my age and I can't say my age, um, nobody has a right to tell me what I'm supposed to look like or act like at this age. It's mine. I'm mine. Me no, me no want nobody no kind of explanation or obligation. Me can do whatever the fuck I want. We're not, we're not illegal and we're not encroach by nobody else. Freedoms are rights. There was a woman who never smiled or laughed because she didn't want to age. She died miserable. <laughs> Is that a real woman? I hate it when people say, oh, you look good for your age. No, I look good full stop. First of all, I don't need them to tell me nothing. I don't want them to tell me nothing. Like, you don't need to tell me nothing. Just fuck off. If you, if you come with all of this, if you come with all of this entitlement and, and obligation, when you say, when you say, wow, you look good, and then you expect something back from me. Like, I never asked you what you thought of how I look. I never asked. If, frankly, it's nice of you to pay a compliment, but me don't need it. I mean, never asked for it. So if your compliment comes with an, an obligation on my part, then, then keep that shit. Keep that shit. You give me one compliment, I'm a smile. What more you want? Leave me alone. What the fuck? I mean, I get just and come out of the road for you. I mean, come out of the road my business. And if the two hour parts cross, make it be civil. Make it be pleasant. You can give me one compliment if you want. May I, may I accept it, may I appreciate it. But your compliment shouldn't come with any kind of expectation. None. I don't want you to expect nothing from me. Because if you need something from me in exchange for your compliment, then left me and keep your compliment. Keep your compliment. When you tell me, say, oh, nice dress, I me buy it. The fuck you think? Me they think it don't nice and no. You confirm for me, say, oh, like, whew, sigh of relief. Thank God, in thinking nice. Me already thinking nice. That's why me pick you up at a fucking store. I already do think it's nice. So, me now ask you for come validate nothing about me. Anyone that finds truth discomforting isn't someone I'd even build a discussion with. Yes, because it's next level crazy to be upset that an aging person look aged. Don't get me started. It rough. One time, I see them, somebody, they put out one, one sitting... Um, this, I think it was a, the star or the gleaner. One of them had a, had a feature, a day in the life of. And then me invite me to do it and me say, yeah, me I go do it. I don't know what me go say me I do it for the blood clot. I shouldn't do it. But then, the, me not have nothing happening in my day when I was here. So upon a, a regular busy day, me not have no stranger no, no welcome in my day. So me have to care them go do superficial things like God here just uh, So me just time... My trip to the hairdresser for when I come. So then come in at the hairdresser and they ask if they can take pictures of me before I'm sure. I'm a dear. This is what I look like. Me never no makeup. Me never no hair. No wig. Because they might do me hair. Right? And then post that. Somebody captured one piece of them picture there and go post it and say, Reggae artists aging. Reggae artists aging terribly. Like, Harry Bradshaw, go on your bed before you start look too old for your age. <laughs> Later, love you. No, seriously. I me see this now, I mean, I look funny like. And then, you know, complain when time I'm anti blood clot social. You know, I socialize with people as so a fuck up and pussy wallish. I don't want to. And then they go like something wrong with me. No, something wrong with the rest. I don't know. But they're nice. <laughs> How much time I'm telling this? They're not nice. And they don't nice. And so it's easier for you to interact with, you know, cross the, the phone screen. 
than in person. Because in person, I actually get your energy. Yes, I just some words on the screen. In person, I get your physical energy and that's real. You know, it's bad enough when you, you see the words. When me actually reach a point now where I can ignore them and don't make me have that big an impact on my life. I don't me not have to respond to the words unless me feel like me choose. Um, but I don't want in person. I don't, don't want to share. Like a lot of people say, I want to meet you, I want to sit down and I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Why? Look at the kind of conversation I want to have online. Why I don't want to carry that to physical space? You know, so it's not nice. Like when you go on a random stranger's post and, and you see one woman put on one dress. She swear to God that she look good. That look good to she. She feel nice. She put it on and she take a picture and post because of that people do. In a 2020s, other people do. In a this era. Yeah. Them put on one clothes and then feel good in it. Them put on some makeup. Them are no makeup artists. But I then see everybody I do put on makeup and then no money or no, then I'm not no exposure to no makeup. So then go put on the makeup themselves, then go up on YouTube, then follow somebody where I give them instructions and then try. And then think they look nice. And then put it on. Put take a picture and post it. And then 50 million people come underneath. And then people start share it and then go viral. Say you no know, ugly them be like, you know how nasty you wanna be? If you do stuff like that. It reminds me of how the LGBT people roasted bold for saying he had twin boys, saying that he's not at liberty to determine the gender of his children. The hell, they are boys. That is a whole different kettle of fish. Where, I never know which part for beginning. Because we got you one period where we know when we look back on it. First of all, we were alive right now. I got too shame for look back. But we kids are going to look back scathingly. We kids are going to look back in judgment. I need a princess nor queen. I have no kingdom. I have no, no province, no territory that belongs to me. I don't rule over anywhere. And it's okay to just be a person. Everybody doesn't have to be a queen or a princess. Um, me kinda, you know, say, me have one problem with that something that we we'll reach in a blackness. The level we we'll reach in a blackness where say empress and queen and princess and I'm bothered by it because it suggests that my ego could not survive just being a peasant. I'm bothered by the fact that I don't feel like I'm valid unless I'm royalty. And why do I need to be royalty? This is superficial anyway. It's, it, it doesn't have any, hey, OG Jenny, big girl. Queen, princess, empress, chief, ruler, all of them something there. These are, these are, superficial titles where we give to each other we give to ourselves for feel better about ourselves now when somebody like me come out of my mother so good when me need them therefore me, me jump out of my mother as a good as you know me good from a barn me not really need none of them something me, me day i try to work on interpersonal relationships i may try to work on getting to understand myself better and to improve for myself me not really need to have one kingdom to feel good yeah so i don't want a kingdom I'm a kingdom, you know. I'm a good girl. I'm just as good as. Just as good as. You always found it cringe? I find it very cringe. I uh, for, for quote you. I find it, yes, that very cringe. That when we speak to, like when we gather in black spaces now and we speak to each other and there are a lot of females present, we ha all have to be queens. What the fuck? Then I'm a white peasant. Let me know this. If every single one of we are queen, who are the chambermaid? Who are farmer? Who are the, the, the court jester? Negus, big of yourself. Eh? Who are the other people? Because one kingdom not only have king and queen, one kingdom made up of every kind of person you can think of. So if Every time we talk to some black woman, we sit down and we talk to some black woman, all on our king and queen. Who the fuck are on the kingdom? Because king and queen just sit down on the throne and then delegate, they don't do nothing. So who are they on the kingdom? Who? Men or queen? Funny enough, the peasants are the ones that help royalty survive. Yes. What are your thoughts on the strong black woman or strong black man concept? Now get me started. 
They get me started on the strong block. I tired for be a strong black woman. I'm going to come off on my back. My fever at last. I don't want to carry the world on my shoulder. I left me alone. I'm not, not off strong. Sometimes I'm weak and sometimes I cry. Sometimes I just don't know what the fuck to do. I just stand up in the middle of every... You did. There was one, one time when I was in an airport in Germany and my, my flight missed me. And the person who I travel with me in Oshpa, Hinde, at the time I travel with my husband, me get held back in a immigration and him gone through for him US passport. And then when me finally come out, me can't find him. And me stand up and me watch me, me go on my gate and me watch my flight left and me can't find him. And him never got the gate. And bitch, me get them for rebook whip on a flight and still can't find him. Me I call him phone, call him phone, him phone now answer. Until eventually me just stand up right in the middle. Like, me, me go, you know, Germany, they're very, very aggressive. Very impersonal and cold even. And me get run from decks after decks and me, me say, me, you know, make no sense. Me go waste money, go buy a new ticket because I don't know where this man is. And me stand up in a big life place and me just start ball. I'm just ball and ball and ball. Strong black, black woman allowed for that, me no know. But me no give a fuck. I ball because I didn't know what the fuck else to do. Just ball. Me just stand up and just ball. Me call my agent and him say, I try to call him and him not find him neither. And, he, and me just miss a rugby. Um, Claudio. Me no know if he do. And me just ball, ball. And I want a woman from the airline. I pass me a ball. Turn out for be one manager. Ask me what happened to me. And me couldn't even, me could have barely tell her through the nose not to blood clot and the woman hug me. Me surprised one German woman hug me. And say, come, can I go to her office? Sit down in there and rebook me and say, if I have no problem, Come up, she book me for the next morning. And if, if me have no problem, come back to her. And you know what? Me never have no more problem. Me finally find him. Me man go lie down at some gate and drop asleep. These phrases are actually harmful in my opinion. I think so too. It reduces the vulnerability of black people. We're expected to be accustomed to suffering and lack emotions. Me no want nobody call me strong. Me no want nobody call me strong neither. Especially when you come take your courage come put on my head. You, you expect me to carry it. Call me strong. Me no fucking strong. I'm not a beast of burden. Sometimes I am strong. Sometimes I am not. I am human. That's what I am. Which means don't expect any particular thing from me. What you can expect from me? Not one fucking thing. No expect nothing from me. If me strong in at this moment, me strong. Me go be strong as much as me can, but me not, me not be strong because me think me, me need for be strong is not my definition. Strong is not my definition. Strong is sometimes what me be. Right? But when me weak, me weak, how much time I hear me telling me, say, me go lie down and hug up my knee in a fetal position and ball. I do that. I me do that without shame. Why do you think me get teared up from me? And no, nothing for me and no decoration. Me not have no... Me not have no useless parts. Me are not like mechanic where, where you care, you care, go give me when you don't fit your back, you have some screw left over and you say, no man, them, 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 them no, no necessary. Like, what the fuck you mean? If four didn't think it necessary to put in there, you put it back. Me not no useless parts. Every one of my screw them serve purpose. Every bolt, every nut, every cog serve a purpose, including my tear ducts. So if me have tear ducts, me know me supposed to can ball. And fuck you. If you don't want to see me a ball, stop. Look. I think we neglect being human way too often in an effort to maintain these labels. And I uh, uno, I know me. I uh, uno, I me, 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 me saying there is no. That's why I wonder about appendix removals all the time and tonsils. We shouldn't be doing that. I don't think so. But me tell you, no blood clot tears, no the back of my smile. If me a smile, me a smile. When the tears are there, the tears fall without no smile, I hide it. My tears them legal. My tears them legal. I do not care what you think about my tears. My tears not nothing to do with you. You're too enough. If my tears are bad, you are because you're in my way. And you have to fuck off and move. And my tears, I may have the right to cry them as much as me need to. My tears. Me and I want strong black woman. Me just happen to be one black woman. That's it. And that if it's something I choose. And that's something I choose. Me never decide for be black in a this body. Yeah. If there's a point before me come to earth when me did choose for come here, so fine that I did spiritual me. But me right here, so in that body, yeah, that girl, yeah, never choose this shit. My mother black and my father black. That's why me black. I know me pick black. 
So I don't walk out as like super black. I don't name super, but I don't know. I don't want super hero where it's black. It's super black. I don't want nobody to give me nothing for care. I don't want them to tell me, say, I'm angry. I want angry black woman. I don't want angry black woman. Sitting up now, I'm angry. I want human. Tired I will. Tired. I don't know how to get tired of it. Like, how long are you going to carry them burden here for? The labels want to carry. The labels them so fucking heavy. It's like them make out a chaos and I want to take them put on the head and I want to carry them forever. I want to neck a pop and I still not put them. Put them down. Put them the fuck down. Put them down. I'm very scared. And then you have a black woman them over here. So where I say, me not, me, me, me not proud of myself. Let me shame of myself. I'm not like my blackness. I me because me put on one wig. Fuck you, bitch. Eh? Me supposed to hold up the whole of blackness with my dry head. Me can't put on one wig because if me put on one wig, some more me a betray or feel no blackness. You need to keep your blackness to yourself. And you maintain your blackness however it, 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 it suits you. And you left me to be whoever the fuck I am. Me want to put on this, me put on this. You know want to see this, don't put on one. It's that simple. Can you imagine you over the side the way you want with your head and want the way you want with my head too? How much fucking head? How much head? Like me grudge you. You get a lot of head and me not get none. Jesus Christ, this is so unfair. Tanya, I'm a renegade by nature and for very long it has made me a stand out. Sometimes for the good and sometimes the worse. I can't conform to anything my soul does not approve. I don't think you need to. I don't think you need to conform to anything that your soul does not approve. You see that woman here from my life, her name OG Jenny Pony Black? This is a woman where every day then come at her. Jesus Christ, the woman play like a music in her kitchen and dance and I love it. It looks so freeing. Like it, it, it inspires me. It makes me feel good. Like she fear, the fear happiness. So fucking infectious. Me sit down and watch her video them. Uh, yeah. You know, say you're not nice. Why you show me off? Me would have love saying it too. <laughs> the people I'm wearing get out, me not like them. But anyway, the woman there in her kitchen and she plays some music and she dance. She look very nice. And she dance good. And she happy. And her face show the happiness. Her body language show the happiness. It is very infectious. I like to see it. Every time I come across her, I watch because it makes me feel good. When I see Uno feel good, that makes me feel good. Happiness is infectious. And then you got some people come on and eat there and say, look how she carry on for her age. Look how she... Like, what the fuck you know about her? You come on the internet and you see something you know, like, you know, scroll God. The internet's so full. It, oh, it overflowing with things and people and kittens and puppies and babies and things. Just so many things. You see one thing where you know, like, you move to the next thing. Your, your attention span shrinks so short because of this social media that you are your your short attention span is being fed by a millions and millions and millions of things. So you're not a shortage of things. You see one sitting where you're not like me, see sitting where you're not like instantly, boom, gone. Simple and easy. And you customize your viewing pleasure. Because the more you, you reject things that you don't like, you can even block her if you know what's there. The more you reject things that you don't like, the less of things like that you see. But people would rather come to make you know how displeased they are that you exist. Why? Why are you displeased that I exist? How am I a bother to you, really? If me just sit down over here, so I talk about what me like to talk about. With the people them who like to talk about that too. And you don't like to talk about this. And you have to come here, so if you come say, well, I don't like it. Nobody gives a fuck. Move on. You don't have to, you know what can burn me when people say, we need a dislike button. For what? There's a like button. If you don't click it, we assume that you don't like it. We don't need a dislike button. The dislike button is for feed your ego, for make you feel like you're more important than you are so that you can come in and say to somebody, I have decided. All I see is unemployment. Clearly, they don't have nothing to do. You're damn right. No, I have decided that I don't like what you do and it is not enough that I don't like it and don't want to see it. I have to let you know. I need you to know that I don't like what you do. Because I don't feel good enough about myself. I need you to know that I don't like this. So that for five seconds when you see me say I don't like this, I can exist to you. Because apparently my life's so lacking that me need to exist over in your life too. 
I've had that so many times. When pe I buck up on people, I say, I used to like her, I don't anymore. And that's why I unfollow her. And that's why I decided that I just laugh, chuckle to myself and keep moving like I did not know. <laughs> no, I do. I didn't miss you. And me now say that in our malicious way, me really not, me not have the capacity to miss you. Me not, we don't have the capacity to miss each other. Unless you don't have two followers on me and one of them and then me go. So then you don't miss. It's like Jesus. That's a lesson I had to teach my students recently. You can ignore things you don't like without verbalizing your opinion. Jesus, it's so weird, Jamar. It is weird that everybody needs to get up on a soapbox and state their dis displeasure with everything. But yet, when somebody like me states my displeasure with the performance of government and tells me to chat too much, that is my business. Government actually answers to the people. So we do have the right to say, we are not satisfied with this performance. We have that right. Yet we think, yet people nowadays seem to think, them have the right to tell us they don't like the way you dress, the way you, you hear, look. They don't like your food. You can post your food and then come on and eat it and say, yuck. I teach my clients that all the time. Boy, Britt, me no know. Me, am I on Facebook? Yes, but my hardly active on Facebook. F Facebook, it starts on like one echo chamber. And if it, there's any of my friends here from Facebook, don't take it personal. But it started on like an echo chamber. People on Instagram give one different opinion and we introduce it to something else. There's very few people on Facebook were actually um, challenged without a, a war. It, Facebook only challenges political. So if you say something about liberty, you'll find liberty them coming for cut the truth. If you say something about PMP, you'll find PMP them coming for cut the truth. It's not a conversation. There's no exchange of ideas. There's nothing to learn. And then you get the Charlie McCarthy's and you get the sycophants. <coughs> and none of those appeal to me. <coughs> and Instagram, after you get rid of the idiots who just want a war, you find people who actually engage and will share ideas well, not too bad person you know. we'll share ideas and teach you things more so on instagram than on facebook so it kind of me really not like the echo chamber living men are that the kind of artist say. me don't want me don't want no cheerleader um me don't want nobody tell me say me right me don't want nobody laugh after everyone i'm a joke and if me find that happen for Instagram, me gone too. When when it feel like that happen for Instagram, me take breaks. Um, me take break for anything. Me easy if you take break. Social media dislike button will never happen. Social media is carefully crafted and thoroughly discussed. You're right. The dislike component comes with unfollowing, blocking, or to the extent where you can mute. Yes. Oh God, me have so much people on mute. You know how much ghosts me have on my post them. I say me have ghosts for kill, just some grey comments. You'll never see a dislike. It's just not a thing to do. But, but why would anybody want a dislike? Why would I need a dislike? The algorithms work. Whatever you follow, you get more of. Whatever you follow, they give you more of. So in the space, there can be an abundance of this particular thing that you don't like, but because you didn't follow it, you don't get any of it. And because not enough follow it, people follow it, then you don't see a lot more of it popping up. But if you follow it to say, I don't like this, all it says is, oh, engagement. It counts engagement. So you get more of it because you engage with it. It's something we're hard, especially old people don't really understand. Old people on social media, media is menace. It always fascinates me how people of this day and age arms and gloves up with the government and at the same time expect the country to be run effectively. Never happening. Oh, God. We just got an email dictating a new dress code. No bright flashy colors. We have to dress up and only natural hair color. What? At work? Eek. But what's natural hair color, though? How do you determine what is natural hair color? So are they saying they don't have a problem with red hair if you grow it like that? Um, they don't have a problem.